He that dwelleth in the secret place of the, high, of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. <clears throat> I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pl- uh, pestilence. He shall come, or, excuse me, He shall cover thee with His feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the, excuse me, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even my most high, thy habitation. There shall be no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Have any prayer requests this morning? This. I'll ask you all to remember Haley. She's having a little bit of a rough spell right now, but uh, maybe it'll turn out to be nothing. Just a scare for her, so. (laughs) Uh, But do remember her. It's uh, only about a month away now, so. I guess you could say we're all kind of getting anxious for this new arrival. So, <laughs> so. All of us are here. Yeah. Y'all pray for her. She told me. She called me yesterday morning sick. We went down and spent, I don't know, a couple of hours with her yesterday morning. She wants to come back to church before the baby's born. So y'all pray that. Good Lord bless them enough they can get back up here before this happens. So. Amen. Uh, anyone else this morning with a prayer request?
be a rough thing there, Randy. So. Anyone else before we move on, Mr. Horn? <laughs> Anyone else this morning? Remember my name and he's supposed to have me to Folks, I'm going to say this. Tammy, we should be so thankful. Remember, this is Thanksgiving week. Sorry. Folks, we have so much to be thankful for. Good Lord's being good to us. Sorry. Being good to us. He's good to us every day, so. Uh. Me and Sarah was talking a little bit this morning for church here. And, you know, she made the comment, we have nothing to grumble about. That's right. We don't. Amen. We have absolutely nothing to grumble about. When we grumble, folks, it's the old human nature side of us. And I think the older we get, the more we see this. I can say it on my behalf. Growing up, you didn't think about a whole lot of these things that are going on or taking place. But the older you get, the more you see. Like I said, good Lord's been good to me. I'm sure he has you. Let's just thank him this week for how good he is to us. I mean, not just only Thanksgiving Day, but every day, folks. Every day. Anyone else with a prayer request this morning? Unspoken this morning. Amen. All right, if you'll come to your feet, then we'll be dismissed to our classes with a word of prayer here. <clears throat> our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the day you've given us. Father, we thank you for our health and our strength. Father, most of all, we thank you for being a Father who watches over us and takes care of us. Lord, we know you bless us when we need it. Lord, we know you chas or that you... Punish us when we fail to do what you want us to do for. Lord, we just ask you to you lead us and guide us, have us to go in the direction you'd have us to go. Father, all these prayer requests we've heard here this morning, Lord, we'll hand them over to you, that you can handle them your own will and way, and on your timetable, Father, and not ours. Father, the ones that's lost loved ones this week, Lord, we just ask you to comfort them the only way that I know how. Father, the ones that's not here this morning, for whatever the reason may be, Lord, just touch them, Lord, and let them know we're praying about them, we're thinking about them, we're wishing them back soon. Father, we just thank you for our church and what it means to it. Father, the people who make up our church, Lord, we love each and every one of them. You know, from the bottom of our hearts, how much we appreciate each and every one here today. Father, we just ask you now that you go with us into our classes today, Lord. Bless our teachers, Lord, give them the words that they need to say and bring us out a message to apply to our hearts and our souls. Father, now watch over us and take care of us. Go with us through the remainder of the service, Lord, for all these things and last blessings in thy blessing, holy name. Amen. Amen.
Anybody need a book? Anybody got one? Peggy, you need one? Thank you, Jay Neal. Everybody else good? It's good to see you out this morning. It's good to see this number out for Sunday school class. Hope, uh, hope this week's been a blessing to you. Uh, come through a revival and um, had a speaker and singers and I hope, uh, I hope uh, you got something out of it. Good Lord gets his will out of it. So it was a good week, good revival. If you're turning your books, anybody got any prayer? Other, any more prayer? Gary, just ask prayer. We'll start Sunday school out in prayer. Anybody got anything you want to add to the prayer list? If you don't, keep me in prayer to stand here in front of you and bring out the message. Gary said, bring out the message that the Lord would have fit. We'll just say a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, just help us through the Sunday school class. Help us with the reading of the word. Lord, that you get what you'd have out of it. Each put in our, each for our hearts, Lord. Just be with each and every one. Be with the ones that's not here. Be with the ones that was uh, out sick. And just be with Nancy. She's in the hospital. And just be praying for our uh, the ones that's usually here this morning but it's not. So just let them know we're thinking about them. Amen. If we will, uh, we'll go to uh, page 136. Communicate God's Word. And the first question is, what's something you often find yourself telling others about? Um, in your daily life at work, or usually you always got something to talk about, seems like. I mean, most of this time of year got deer hunting tales or something to tell. But uh, I think this is getting more to, are we, are we communicating God's word in our conversations? And um, the point Knowledge of God's word should not be kept to yourself. Pass it on. I think we all just come through revival, and most of you here, about everybody here today is pretty regular here, and so we know God's word, and we just need to pass it on, to keep it to ourselves, and uh, let people know about you, Jesus. Um, message of readings will be coming out of Deuteronomy. And Bible meets life. I fly frequently, so I'm accustomed to hearing the flight attendant give the pre-flight rundown. Anyone who has flown has heard the flight attendant give the flight itinerary. Go through all the safety features of the aircraft and instruct passengers to fasten their seat belts. The attendant will also tell everyone what to do in case of a cabin pressure. In that likely, unlike, unlikely event, face masks will descend from the cargo space above. Passengers will are instructed to first to fix their own mask before helping others with theirs. The lesson is simple. You can't help others very well if you haven't taken care of yourself first. This is a helpful picture of what's involved in telling others about God's word. We all know others who could use a healthy dose of scripture, but we can't help others very well if we haven't taken care of ourselves first. As we take in God's word, we can share its truth with others. In fact, as we consume a healthy diet of scripture and grow from it, we're eager to share it with others. I know sharing God's word and this and getting in God's scripture and growing from it as you grow with yourself, it makes it a lot easier to stand up and to speak to someone about God. He'll work through you, but I, I truly believe you've got to work on yourself and then God can work through you to get that scripture or that word out. Moving on, reading of Deuteronomy 6, 1 through 3. Uh, I know Sunday school classes, uh, we sort of got away from it, but uh, 
I was thinking about it the other day, and I think when I seen Rick in here at Revival, I thought, you know, we some of the Sunday school classes we used to we sort of got a way of asking if anybody wants to read this. So I think we'll get back to us. Anybody like to read this verse one and three, one, two, three, Deuteronomy? Anybody want to read it? Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Teresa. These scriptures, we've, we've heard and we've read them, we've studied them, and uh, we've heard um, that the mighty, so we fear our God, thy God. Um, I think, you know, we look at fear, um, there's different meanings of fear. And fearing my God is trusting my God, believing in my God. And knowing my God's always right, no matter what we think or how we think, look for God's way, and then you know He's always right. Forty years earlier, God had miraculously rescued the Israelites from Egyptian slavery. He gave them incredible promises, including a promise to return to and inhabit the land promised to Abram, Abraham. He also gave them his commandments, command to obey his way of holiness and to trust his incredible promise. That's, that's fearing to me. I translate that as fearing God. Yet during their 40 years in the wilderness, Israel often failed to obey and trust. I think each one of us Speaking myself and let you speak for yourself and think for yourself. I think in life, human nature, we've, big or small, we've probably found that we have failed to obey something simple or something big, and it usually costed us. Right. Um, so each one of us can personally look at that. Each time Israel failed, God extended grace and mercy. And I thought of that as he... Every time I've ever failed my human nature, God has always seemed like he's been with me at the end. If, if I turn to him Amen. and repent and ask for forgiveness, he's always been right there. God extended grace and mercy. A constant source of Israel's disobedience and distrust was a fundamental struggle to believe that God's way was the best or that God would do what he promised. In Deuteronomy 6, Moses sought the motive to motivate the Israelites to understand the benefit of obeying God's word. Thousands of years later, there's still great benefit in obeying God's word. Amen on that. Through our circumstances may differ, we can still apply Moses' instructions to our own relationships with God. The point of Moses' word in this passage are clear. Follow the commandments of Scripture, but do to what end. Moses shows us threefold benefits to obeying God's word. One is obedience leads us to fear God. Moses said to obey God's word that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and all his commandments which I command thee. Thou and thy son and thy son's son all the days of thy life. The phrase fear the Lord does not mean a gripping phobia or terror. 
It generally means reverence, reverence. God's word reveals who he is. And as we discover that follow and follow all we learn about him, we revere him in all his power, majesty, and glory. Fear then is wise behavior. Obedience leads to God's blessing in our lives. Moses said to keep all God's statutes and all his commandments all the days of thy life, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily. And because God has promised the land that floweth with milk and honey for Israel, God's blessings were both spiritual and physical. Their obedience wrote physical land, biological prognity, and material provisions from the Lord. Today, God's blessing to us are still spiritual and physical. Whether or not we sense God's physical blessings, we are blessed. And we are certainly blessed spiritually. Blessed be the God of, and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Three, obedience leads to God's blessings for others. Moses intended for the Israelites to pass on God's promise to the generations after them. Here we learn an important truth. God never intends his blessings to stop with us. In whatever way he has blessed us, he desires for us to bless others. And there is no better way to bless others than to put God's word on display through our own obedience. Our own obedience can motivate others to embrace Jesus Christ and follow him in obedience. Question two. How has someone else benefited from someone sharing God's word with you? I hope that the God's me uh, the obedience I have for God's word shows in my daily walk that I've helped someone else in the world. Um, not perfect. Definitely not asking anyone to try to walk the footsteps I have. I've asked you to walk better than I have, but I hope it's something that I have done on daily on my daily walk shows that I do love God and I do love Excellent. obedience to God. Page 140, Deuteronomy chapter 6, 4 and 5. Another message, anyone would like to read those two verses? Thank you, Kate Neal. Amen. As we've already noted, a constant source of Israel's disobedience and distrust was a fundamental struggle to believe that God's way was best or that God would do what he promised. The tension between Israel's failures and God's faithfulness fostered a roller coaster relationship between the Israelites and God. But God in his mercy and faithfulness would not let go of his people. Ain't that a blessing? That's a true blessing right there. We also may struggle to trust God's promise or obey his commandments. We too can easily find ourselves at a crossroads of belief. Thankfully, just as God's mercif mercifully held Israel so he continually showers his grace upon those of us who believe Jesus' gospel. It's here that we find our ultimate motivation to continue trusting and obeying. God holds firmly to us, so we hold firmly to him. God's love relentlessly pursues us, so we lovingly chase after him. 
His love for us pearls our lie, our love for Him. And our love for Him compels our trust and obedience. Deuteronomy 6, verse 4 and 6 is considered one of the most important passages in all the Bible. These verses are called the Shema from the Hebrew word of here, which is the first word in this passage. When Moses began verse 4 by saying, Hear, O Israel, he underscored the importance these words carried. By Jesus' time, faithful Jews recited this passage multiple times per day. Jesus referred to this passage when he when the lawyer asked him to identify the greatness command the greatest commandment. Today we can find motivation to trust and obey God in Shemal Shemal. In this verse, Moses provided the ultimate examples of autorology, right belief, and you can go for that word, right living. Number one, anybody t jump on that word? Autorology? Orth orthodoxy? Moses reminded the people of just who their God is. He wasn't like the pagan gods of the polyistic Canaanites in the land of Israel were about to possess. Instead, the Lord our God is one Lord. In one simple sentence, Moses defined proper orthodoxy. Moses highlighted God's unity and his exclusively in our words, Israel did not have many gods, but rather one. And Yahu was his name. Was his name? It was the to him. They were ultimately responsible. Our Lord is still one, and He still stands alone. The Bible points to Him throughout the pages. Throughout the ages, the God is worshipped today as the creator we see in Genesis. And the libertarian we find in Exodus, he is the king of kings, revelations. To whom all we bow down, our God is the shepherd to see in the Psalms. He is also the God who became flesh in person of his son, Jesus Christ, today the Lord is still one. He is still our God, and we are still res responsible to him. Moses also shows his authority in verse 5. We find the only fitting response to who God is. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. Love is to be our wholehearted response to who God is. Love for Him is to consume our whole being. As we see the greatness of God, we respond by giving Him the to totally of ourselves. We no longer confine our worship to a Sunday morning service, but we seek offer ourselves as a living sacrifice of worship. Every domain of life now becomes the opportunity to worship through trust and obedience. And it is this love and devotion that compels us to trust and obey Him. Question three, what are some ways you demonstrate your love for God? Why do we love one another? Why do we love one another? That's true. scripture when he's talking about loving the Lord thy God with all the heart, my soul, and my mind. So it's like the life of them to it. Love thy neighbor as thyself. 
said, all the other commandments sins on me, so the lay the love one another uh, uh, actually is showing how we love the Lord because he's told us what. How we one love, love one another. And that means a lot, you know. Amen. Having, showing love to one another. Sure. Whether it's your wife or your church member or your family. Um, or someone out on the street. Sometimes it's easier to show love in certain situations out on the street than it is to your wife sometimes. So you fail. But I do love my wife tremendously. Uh, moving on, 142. Verse 6 through 9, anyone like to read that? Thank you. Amen. Thank you for reading that. Even as Jesus affirmed the shalom as the greatest commandment, he added a second one like it. He said, love thy neighbor as thyself. As we learn the benefits of God's word for ourselves, we should want others to experience those divine benefits too. If love for God can compels us to trust and obey his word, then love for others compels us to share his word at every opportunity. To communicate God's word effectively, Moses said these words, shall be in thy heart, simply stating, we shall have a heart that beats for God's word. This, unscore, this underscores the value of of memorizing scripture. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. In Psalms 119.11 The more of God's word that resides in our hearts, the more others will hear his word coming from our mouths. Moses describes this area where we should communicate God's word. He basically clarifies that no boundaries exist. We should teach scripture to our children, and we should talk about scripture to anyone who will listen. We should communicate God's word inside our homes, and we should share it outside our homes. Scripture should be on our minds no matter where we are. When thou sittest in thy house, and thou walkest by the way, and regardless of the time of day, when thou layest down and when thou risest up. Why do some people find sharing, sharing about God so difficult? And I'm sharing the word of God in, um, I believe, in, in a young a young stage of your spiritual growth in this world, especially the kids this day and time. When I was growing up, it was hard enough to share God's word, but they sure didn't push God out like they are now. So I couldn't imagine the kids now that's having to grow up in this time, the difficult step that they have to grow or what they have to grow through to be able to share God's word. Um, I remember as a kid, there's no ways, everybody's talked about being standing up here, there's no way I could have stood. I'd been scared to death, still scared to death, but I'm standing on God because of the, the growth of my faith in him. But uh, this day and time, they've pushed him out of the schools, pushed him out of our government, pushed him out of our daily life to where the kids this day and time, I really, really am concerned what they have to go through. 
And uh, why do some people find sharing about God so difficult? I probably can't imagine how difficult it is right now for those kids to do that. Not because they're bad kids. They're godly kids. They're our kids, and we love them. But what they're facing is a time that I don't think any of us can. We've not lived through it like they are. So be in prayer for these young kids. Moses called the Israelites to write down scripture where they could see it. On their walls or as they part from or as part of their clothing. By the time of Jesus' earthly ministry, some Jews, Jewish men took, took this literally, wearing small boxes called, containing small bits of scripture on their foreheads or left forearm. Sadly, the religious leaders did not do this to remind themselves of God's word. They did it to make themselves look spiritual. Jesus con condemned this. He said, all their works they do for to be seen of men, they make broad their... Well, you got that one? Philosophies? And in large the borders of their garments. We can avoid the same regalism and wrong motives if we remember the heart of Moses' word. We are to love God with every part of our being and share God's word in every part of our lives. Wherever we go, it is an opportunity to communicate God's word to anybody who's with us. But what does this look like? Consider the following ways you might apply these trusts. If you are part of a family, acquired a devotional guide like open windows and read through the selections after dinner each night. Identify key scripture verses, write or print them out and place them in strategic areas around your home. You could be as creative or artistic as you like. The goal is to keep God's word consistently in front of you. I know in our house, Shana's got a little chalkboard in the kitchen and every so often I'll look up and there'll be a different verse written on that board it'll stay for a couple of days or weeks and then it'll change so share an encouraging scripture verse with a cashier a waiter or a hairdresser allow it to flow naturally from conversation but offer them something more than mere sentiment about the day's weather Ask some friends to read the Bible with you. Select three to four others to join you. Maybe include an unbeliever. Meet once a week for an hour. Read a chapter of scripture. Talk about what you're learning and pray together. This is a remarkable way God does what God does when you read his word with others. Since you have studied with a group using this book, consider felicitating a group using this same study as a way to get others into God's word. Sin has distorted right from wrong and left people desperate and hungry. You and I have God's word at our readily disposal, and we have it in abundant supply. We have been well fed this bring others to God's banquet table and help them find the substance their heart is yearning to find. His love compels us to do so. How can we impact our homes and community with God's word? And I think all of us tried and prayed to do that on our daily walk and our church service and in revivals uh, our food give backs or we try to do what we can 
to show God's love outside the walls of the church. I truly, truly feel that this church, God's love is not confined inside these walls. We try to push it out. I Amen. think each and every one of us, um, personally, I know all of us walk a godly walk and try to do that. And thank you for that. Living it out. You can communicate God's word in numerous ways. Choose one of the following applications. Inward communication. You are anxious in a particular area, struggling with a specific sin, or do you perhaps need to, to reminder one of God's promises? Identify the relevant scripture verse, write it down, take it with you wherever you go this week. Upward communication. As you read the Bible regularly, combine your scripture intake with prayer. Incorporate the words of scripture into your prayer. As you do this, you will learn how to communicate God's word back to him as worship. This process here, I have found myself um, in my study and then prayer during the studies You've heard a time or two that I've came and said this is where God's led me. A lot of times right here is where you'll get led. It's when you're in the study, you're in the Word of God, you're in the Bible, and you're reading that Bible. And if what you're reading, you're reading and you're hearing, you're seeing, but you're not getting that tug and you pray about it, it'll come. It's, it's happened more and more. He just passed by. Hmm. Outward communication. Ask some friends to read the Bible with you and join your Bible study. So there's a couple of different ideas. Uh, back home, we got a little time here. 4, 4, 144, they engage. Where do you have opportunities to teach or promote the truth of God's Word? Use the categories from verse 7 and 9 to identify opportunities in today's world for th talking about Scripture. How can you promote the truth of Scripture? When you sit in your house, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, when you get up. So basically, whatever you do, you can promote the Scripture. Um, so anyone got anything on this? Good little lesson there, uh, which all these are. But thank you, everyone, for being part of the day's service. Anybody got anything? If not, we'll, you want to, we'll stand and say a prayer and close out. A little early, but. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, just thank you for the Sunday school class. We thank you for the opportunity to stand here and to do your work, Lord. Lord, we just ask you to help each and every one of us on our daily walks, in our, in our homes, with our loved ones, with our families, and our friends, and our, our children, and our wives, and husbands, and just what it be, Lord, our neighbors, as you tell us in this scripture here, too, to show your love in, in every way possible, Lord, that we don't fail on that. And, Lord, just help us. And help these young kids growing up in today's society, Lord, in the world they're in, Lord, to stand and to be able to talk about you and how great you are. I don't understand, but I know that it's a hard thing for to live this world the, the way it is today and to stand on the word of God as great as you are. But I do know that your prayer, the prayer that you are able to overcome all things with these kids, with our lives, with each and every one. And Lord, we just ask you to help us to stand on that, to be able to speak that word that you'd have us to speak out on the streets or wherever we be in our daily lives. Lord, just help us to speak to our loved ones, to our wives and children the way you'd have us to do, Lord. And just help us with uh, today's meal coming up just to show love there. Amen.